This is Bear With Us Podcast. Uh, well, can we, can we have girl? I mean, we aren't all manly like you. Okay, okay. How's this? This is Bear With Us, girl. No, no, no. More like girl. Like a glitter bear. This is Bear With Us, girl. Perfect. This is Bear With Us, girl, where we stir the honeypot with hot topics, body issues, the adult industry, fashion, news, pop culture, pup culture, and more. From the bear perspective. For and by the community. I can barely stand it. Get it? You're unbearable. (laughs) That's how we do. (laughs) I mean, Brogan's used to hear me make those puns, so... (laughs) It's not shocking. But you know, it's funny. Since we launched, you know, since I joined the show, everybody sends me these puns like, oh, my God, I've never heard them before in my entire life. Thank you. Um, send them my way. I literally have, like, on my phone a list. I'm just saving them. So oh, I'm going to send them. So constantly just whip them out. I'm going to give them your, well, <laughs> I've seen you whip it out. Bloody! Um, <laughs> you know, it's funny, like, being your friend, but then, like, watching your content, because... I'm a fan of people that you film with, mm-hmm. but then it's like watching your brother in action. You know, it's 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 it's, it's your interesting. Bro- it's your brother bear, so it's different. Well, I know, but then it's like, can I? I can't cover half the screen. You know, it's your consensual brother. <laughs> it's not incest. If they I saw that consent. porn. <laughs> anyway, how have you been? By the way, um, I've been going more question. Why are you in North Carolina? <sighs> This is, it sounds like the gayest thing ever, and uh, I want to actually talk to you about this. So I got booked to perform at Judson Theater Company. Um, I do a show called An Evening with the, uh, on the Lanai, and it's a Golden Girls clip show. We do trivia, but then I do like a one-on-one interview with season one writer Stan Zimmerman. Oh, yeah. And we've taken the show to Palm Springs, and then they asked us to bring it to North Carolina. And I was like, sure, I, you know, it's a, it's a paycheck. Um, it's a beautiful theater, beautiful space, and I have never been around such greenery. But what I wanted to talk to you about is, <laughs> walked off the plane, um, there were no brown people, there were no Asian people, um, they they didn't know what to do with me. And, you know, it's so funny, us in LA, we just live our gay life, like, you know, like anything. Um, I had to change some of the script to make it more conservative. Really? Yeah. Um, what, what, very conservative. I was like, what was too out there that you were worried to say? So I opened the show. I'm like, hello, fellow St. Olafians, Shady Pines residents, substitute teachers, and sluts. Talking about Blanche Devereaux. Oh. I had to change it to Southern Bells. And I felt like every like line that I had to change. And then we do a whole portion about LGBTQ in Golden Girls. And you had to take out half the letters. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> just G. Q. <laughs> Mm, there was a G there, but you know it wasn't. It wasn't the case. Um, but it's so weird being out of your safety bubble because all of the old feelings from high school yep. and all that came rushing back. Not just as a Latin ex, but also as as a gay man. Like I felt, we walked around the town, and it's a very cute town. It's like you know. Um, just like what you see in the movies. Well, I mean, think about it. They, you know, they love their history, so they stay back in history, but in more ways than one. There was a Confederate flag flying big and proud, and I was like, yep. mm-hmm. But everybody literally stared, and and it was just odd having that. You know, usually they stare because I'm fabulous, but that wasn't the case then. Um, but then you go on Grinder, and there's all these people that can't host, no faces, you know? And it's like, well, so you're out here, you know? One guy wanted to go do it in the woods. I mean, I as sexy that, as that was, that. yeah, but th- I thought maybe it was like a trap, you know? Can you imagine? I mean, that still happens, so that's why I just kind of avoid <laughs> self. But I think it was good for me to kind of experience that because... It makes you appreciate what you have. That's exactly like, right. You appreciate being that we're blessed getting to be out in a big city like Los, Los Angeles. Because, you know, like, I still have many fans who they are afraid to come out, and I almost sometimes forget about, like, you know, we don't have that in L.A. It's just... Everything's out. Everything's safe to be gay. Even in areas that feel unsafe is nothing to be compared to neighborhoods like that where it's literally life and death if you were out. But that's exactly it. I mean, it was very, very eerie. And it also tells us, like, a show like this. Like, we're, we're not done. And, you know, sometimes we laugh about, like, my high voice or my, my loud jackets. And it's like, well, no, this is what's happening. I'm taking 10 steps forward. I mean, I don't know if they thought it was Ross Matthews in their hometown <laughs> or not. But mm-mm-mm-mm. but what what is your opinion, because I know you have many opinions, of having to scale it back? Like, I did change the script. Um, I did tone it down. I was told to dress conservatively. I mean, it, let me ask, is is this your version of conservative? It was. So when I walked out on stage and I'm like, hello, North Carolina. And they were like, <laughs> like deer in headlights. That that term came from North Carolina. I, and I saw many deer in headlights. I mean, I have those moments when I'm in those smaller parts or from traveling where 
I kind of remind myself, like, all right, maybe try and walk a little straighter or, like, where... But you're passable, let's be honest. Yeah, but here's the thing. You you say that until you get to those areas where, like, even the slightest hint of homosexuality... Or it, pants that actually fit. Yes. I saw cargo right. pants more than I ever want to see again. Exactly. Like, so just looking nice or even taking care of yourself yeah. isn't enough to be like, you're gay because you bathed. Oh, and the men were so hot because, you know, those, like, straight manly guys with the muscles and they don't even know how hot they are? Yes. Oh, God. It's like it's like a palpable energy. Oh. <sighs> that is that is the one thing I love about, like, the Midwest or the South mm-hmm. when you meet men that don't know they're attractive. Yes. Oh. And they have, like, they don't even have Instagram. If they do, they have, like, two followers. That's exactly it. And it's, like, their mom. And then, and then they'll, like, lean over and their shirt pulls up and you see, like, muscles that you don't get at a gym. You just get from, like, living life and carrying lumber and making pancakes. Okay, now it sounds like you're just living your fantasy. <laughs> well, it was. And it was close to Fort Bragg, which was a military. So Grinder was... A lot of camouflage. <laughs> mm. Salute those men. Uh, I, I, I did a couple of times. Anyway, this show is brought to you by Cybersocket.com, the ultimate resource for gay erotica. Now newly designed after 25 years strong, visit Cybersocket for adult star exclusives, interviews, movie reviews, free clips, fun contributions from our team of bloggers, uh, event listings, and their very popular top five columns uh, featuring advice uh, for the bedroom. In fact, you gave your top five of, of uh, hair grooming tips. Yes, I did. <laughs> it was very popular, by the way. I still have people ask me, like, they're like, I never thought of that, that you can, like, you can straighten your chest hair, you can use a blow dryer. I got people, so many comments about flat iron your body hair. People are now, like, messaging me, like, I've started conditioning it, I've started doing, like, deep root. I'm like, I am changing the bear world, making you guys just all soft and fuzzy. Yeah. One body at a time. <laughs> this is what we're doing. You need to create, like, uh, a hairline product. I mean, I have my beard line, but that actually would be a future. Yeah, I think you should do it, like, for armpit hair, Mm -hmm. for, you know, and, like, all natural so that a man will still smell like a man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So (laughs) it was really cute in North Carolina because they put me up at this Airbnb, and they filled it with products that that they thought a man. And it was, like, Axe body spray, (laughs) and it was, like, suave musk. I mean, it was, like, it was, like, uber manly, but it was, like. That, you know, that's the kind of man that dresses up there. Yes. The real axe man. Yeah, it's like we wore a polo to dinner. Woohoo! All right, we'd also like to give a shout out to Bear World Magazine. Bear World Magazine is now nine years old and is the only lifestyle magazine celebrating the global bear community in all its glorious, diverse beauty. If you have not done so already, head over to bearworldmag.com to check out the great berry content and also sign up for the new Wolf Report. Their new weekly newsletter, pa- newsletter <laughs> packed with berry news and gossip. Rawr. <laughs> we, we love Bear World. Uh, I'm very excited for our guest today, by the way. I am a fan bordering on Stalker. I know that's the only thing I always think about when I bring somebody on. I'm like, I know them, they're my friend. And then I talk to you, and you're like, oh my God. Because I'll even text them. you and be like, bah, bah, bah. and now I'm like, Calm. That's why That's why I sit in the middle to separate. This is literally, I was like, I'll be reaching for that booty all day, yeah. like all day long. <laughs> I was like, I am the consent blocker. <laughs> and I would like to introduce the next guest who's a personal friend of mine, Brogan. Brogan is an adult entertainer, go-go dancer, and gay nightlife personality. He is most well known for his OnlyFans and Just for Fans, and more recently has joined on as one of Sean Cody's newest models. I had no clue. Beyond just sharing the hottest moments of his sex life, he encourages fans to embrace his sexuality and identity. And while sex work pays the bills, most days he might say he feels that he just he's just professionally gay. <laughs> sharing his experiences and an unapologetic celebration of being gay, please welcome Brogan. Yeah, yeah, bro. Hey. Hey, what's up? hey bro. Hey. This is Brogan. Hey, girl. Yeah. Well, it was very funny watching your content together because I was very excited. I think I sent you a text right after. Um, and it's always so funny to me in hanging out with people from the adult film world how you guys can, like, fuck the crap out of each other um, and then just, like, hang out. Like, bros. I mean, It's like, not weird at all. Like he just said, it's professionally gay. Oh, my God. I have, like, the best sex I have is just with my friends. Yeah. <laughs> well, I always say test out your friends because then you refer them out to other people. Like, hey, my friend's single. I already tested it. It's good to go. <laughs> well, like I feel like when you like hook up with somebody who's like not a friend, who's a stranger, or just like they just don't care about you, and then you just feel like shit. I'd rather be with a friend who actually cares, or just like 
just so you could like I don't know be I'm, goofy. I'm probably fine if like during sex you're like laughing or like <laughs> See, that should be a like, part of it, right? Like people, well, it depends what they're laughing at. People are <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, Spe- <laughs> specifically at you. Yes. Yeah. Um, people are like, I just want to have like I wish we like gay people had friends like that we didn't sleep with that it wasn't about sex. I'm like, oh my god, I like only want to <laughs> sleep with my friends. I don't want to be friends with you because we had sex, but I want to have sex with you because we're friends. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and if we're not having sex with you, you ugly. <laughs> <laughs> if I like you and you're my friend, I'll sleep with you, no matter if you're ugly. <laughs> yeah. Are we friends now, Broken? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Rick, well, I'm like, listen. If you imagine that only fans, I really don't care who you are. Like, if you're down to have fun sex, like, let's have fun sex. <laughs> but it's very funny because I talked about this with my ex actually uh, this morning. We met for coffee and we talked about that like shame. He feels more shame when he goes on Grinder and hooks up with a complete stranger. It's super super hot. But then he says he always feels shame in like after you you know after you do the deed and then you're like getting dressed or whatever he feels shame and i'm like i like it better with a stranger rather than with friends because with friends are like let's go to a movie and it's like no i just just go take a shower go no, home that's better you want to hang out with your friend after there's like loads in each other <laughs> romantic <laughs> i'm not looking for romance i'm looking for fun but what happens if you have like a christmas party and all your friends come over i mean is it just assumed that everybody's going to end then up it's, like then it's a very white christmas for yeah. me mm. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> snowballs. Yay, cream pie for dessert. <laughs> um, anyway, we start the show with a little hot topic, and I know both of you are, are pretty uh, opinionated. Um, this has come to my attention. Uh, there is a, a gay actor from our community, and he does B... No, I'm, gonna, I'm being generous. He does C and D kind of gay movies, but he's a name that we all know, and he's a face that we all recognize. I met with a major studio that met with this gentleman talking about some of the scripts. They were going to set him up with the casting director. Then he announced that he launched his OnlyFans, and that studio has backed away. And I'm not going to name names at all, but I want to talk about... And the people in the studio are completely homosexual, and I know for a fact that they've seen his OnlyFans stuff personally. So I want to talk about the hot topic of gays putting other gays down for starting an OnlyFans. I mean, that's just complete and honest hypocrisy and also I think insecurity and jealousy all of those things but at the same time like I don't think that actor can be surprised like I yeah. think we I think we could have guessed that that's how it would play out is it wrong yes is it surprising no <laughs> Well, and what the actor is saying is, you know, he's, you, you know, we're all sexual, we're all watching porn, so why not just bring it out and talk about it? But if you were a studio, would you want to promote your actor to B level status if they're doing X rated videos? Or is that the boundary that we're trying to push? It's well, like, yeah, well, who let me, cares? let me ask you this if you're going to do a film and they're going to have you act and pretend like you're having sex, why is it scandalous if that person also actually has sex because then is it art or is it porn it's method acting i mean i definitely i definitely think my videos are art um <laughs> your art that face you made last week was very artful was like, <laughs> <laughs> this is why i don't watch my own videos and i have other people edit i can't stand looking oh is, 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 is that true oh i really i hate watching my own videos mm. i hate the faces i make so and, I, good, and I hate the noises i make so if i if i edit i edit in silence and then i only listen to it for the final playback that's funny well we've talked yeah. about this before. we've talked about this before of one of the worst things when you're editing your video is you have to go to certain parts where like say they're saying fuck yeah. and then you have to edit and you're adding another part and then you keep rehearing fuck the exact same fuck especially from like different when you're like changing the angle and you have to mm-hmm. make sure that it Continuity. matches up that it doesn't happen twice right. otherwise it's, so it's like a remix fuck, fuck, but fuck, so fuck, 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 you're editing, especially like when it's my videos like Aunt dad, aunt dad, aunt dad, aunt dad <laughs> and like <laughs> after a while you're literally about to go crazy you're like I fucking hate that there needs to be a DJ that just remixes all of this stuff all day long. Oh yes, my god! Dad. If there's yes, a, if yes, there's Daddy. a DJ out there that just wants to make like a circuit mix of yes. me moaning different things for my videos, <laughs> broken on the dance floor, <laughs> Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. <laughs> I'm all for that. Uh, but for the hot topic, should sh- should that actor ex- have expected that, or should we put blame on the studio and be like, be more open minded? Well, here's here's what I think. I think it's I think it's fucked up. There's blame on the studio. Um, I also think that like it's impactful for the actor to do it and for the actor to not be ashamed of his sex life. Um, you see artists like Lil Nas X, right, who like makes his music videos now being so explicit about gay sex, and 
I think that's great, right? And there were a lot there are a lot of people in that type of industry that are not going to support that. But like you make your own path and he's been able to make a really successful career out of it. So there's this one studio, right, that's doing this to this actor. It's a but, major studio. But hopefully it's like a setback, not an end of his mm-hmm. acting career, right? Like I would encourage the I don't know who the actor is, right? But I would encourage him like keep doing your OnlyFans, keep pursuing your acting career and show the studio a big middle finger. Because that makes an impact for all gay people to, you know, remove the stigma around gay sex and sex in general. Um, because, yeah, like you'll put it you'll let straight people win an Oscar for simulating gay sex in a movie. But the fact that like a gay person owns that they actually have gay sex before I did sex work, before I did porn, like I would have like my nudes like leaked or something. Right. And I was always like, what are we surprised about? Like, are you shocked I have a penis? And we've all I'm seen not, one. Like, like, I'm not shocked I have a penis. Why are we surprised I have a new right. photo of it? <laughs> here's, the, here's the thing. It's not about the shock. It's that people are mad if you're not shamed. That's why they're mad about it. Where if you're nudes leak, they won't be mad if you say, I'm so ashamed you saw my penis. But if you say, yes, I have a penis, they'll be like, how dare you, sir, admit to that? How dare you admit you have a penis? Yeah. You should be ashamed of it. That's Bad so boy. weird. But there's also the allure, and I know uh, as a fan of erotica, the tease, like seeing a bulge is sexier to me than actually seeing it. Agreed. Agreed. And Agreed. so Agreed. if an actor, like we all have those celebrities like Chris Evans, where I'm looking up his, his butt pics all the time. I'm waiting for something good to happen. But then the moment it finally does happen, and if we see his penis or we see his ass, then it's going to be over. That kind of allures me like, okay, now we've seen it. Like, I mean, but you know his pic le- leaked. Is it him? Yeah, that's him. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that on on, on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See how quickly we forget. <laughs> but here's the thing about Lil Nas X. Um, you know, we've been through a really tough time as a nation because the conservatives have really come after us, all coming from the top. Does somebody like Lil Nas X is that ruining whatever bridges we need to build with? somebody across the table from if I want to come out to my grandma and my grandma's idea is this is what gay is, is that damaging our community right now when we need to be more concerned about holding I hands? mean, what I would say is, first off, fuck your grandma and her opinion when it comes to that. Like, I'm sorry, like, I'm, I'm sick of trying to please another group of people that are never going to be pleased no matter what. So I would just say... But right- people can come around. for no. having conversations yeah. Yeah, for getting to know me as a gay man... They they unconditionally love who I am rather no, than they're, gay is just sex, but sex, they're, sex. They're not loving you who you are. They're loving the idea that you're presenting to them, and that's not being genuine. That's but being a gay I, man is not just having sex. It's not Lil Nas X. But it, I know, but, it, but, but it, it is specific, for some people. But it is specifically the sole reason that we're discriminated against for being gay. Yeah. So being a gay man is more than having sex. But the number, the only reason we are discriminated against is because of who we have sex. That's with. That's a good point. Yep. They'll have us do their hair. They'll Man. have us go shopping with them. They'll have us come do brunch, but they won't vote for our rights. They'll have a show That's up. A they'll have point. a show up at church and sit in their pew as mm-hmm. long as we don't act on it, right? Yep. Like, you can be attracted. Like I went to Catholic school my whole life, right? Like mm-hmm. you can be attracted to whoever you're attracted to. It's the act. Yep. Mm-hmm. The That's act is the what sin. makes the sin. Damn the time. act is the sin, right? Hate the I'm sin, like, not the sinner. Mm-hmm. I'm like. No, but those are my hormones that God put in my body that make my dick get hard when someone touches my butthole. Like, <laughs> well, and Jesus had twelve male friends mm-hmm. 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 and a prostitute. Yeah, she was like, "Hey, girl, like, I'll film your OnlyFans, Jesus." Oh my God, we're gonna get such hate. Oh my God, sorry, Dad. <laughs> For a lot. I mean, we know your dad's not listening to this podcast, but he pro- somebody probably is going to tell him about it. <laughs> What is your relationship with your dad and being in this industry? Oh, oh my yeah. God, let's talk about Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have suspicions that my family knows, but we've never You've discussed never it. My sister knows I have an OnlyFans because when I launched it, I did not know that she... Ha- my sister lives in North Dakota. Um, and she has like girlfriends who follow my Instagram. And so... On like my birthday last year, she called me and she's like, "I have a question. What's OnlyFans?" <laughs> oh my God. She's like, "Cause my girlfriends like saw you promoting it and da 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 And so I like told her, um, told like, her, "You told her it's a charity." I <laughs> I'm raising awareness. It's for my a construction ass. company, and we put fans in commercial. Buildings. I told her I like post like I said like I think I said this like adult content and nudes. I didn't tell her like full on porn. And then she's just like, "So it's basically amateur porn." I'm like, "Yeah, basically." <laughs> 
Um, and then we've just never talked about that again. Oh. So I think I said, like, don't tell dad. And she said, yeah, of course. Um, I have a feeling the rest of my family knows, um, but we've never discussed it. But we don't really discuss anything. Well, and when OnlyFans <laughs> was having that, are we, are we not going to have adult content? I mean, CNN was reporting about it. So, mm-hmm. like, OnlyFans is now a mainstream word that's used. And my mom knows what OnlyFans is. Yeah, like, my, my mom, who she knows that I do this, but she still didn't really get what OnlyFans was. It wasn't until that whole OnlyFans was on CNN that she kind of got. Mm-hmm. She was like, oh, it's a site. Like, she knew I made my own content, but she didn't understand, like, how it works. It now is, like, a household name where everybody understands it just as much as everybody understood what Pornhub was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and everybody in our family is watching Pornhub. doesn't matter what side of the fence you're on. Mm-hmm. I don't think my mom is. I mean, maybe she is, for all I know. I mean, your mom has seen porn at some point in her life. I, I don't. I come don't, on, I, Teddy Bear. I actually don't. Like, I don't think oh, so. No, and I mean, I'm, I'm from the Midwest where, like. Yeah, same. Ooh, like, you, you bury it deep. <laughs> right, but if you, but, <laughs> you know, you can look up Pornhub analytics and being part of Cybersocket.com, we're able to also look up our demographics. Midwest is huge. And trans porn is is more watched in the Midwest than in any other part of the United States. Wow, that's just fascinating, which is probably the most dangerous and most transphobic part. That's exactly right. Um, but you see the numbers, and it's the Midwest that are watching a lot of porn. And on other parts, it's early in the morning or it's super late at night, which makes sense. You wake up, and you don't, know, or you're going to bed, and you need to get to sleep. You go, bah, bah, bah. In Midwest, <laughs> it's all day long. It's like, you know, are they out in the tractor, or are they, you know, working at the library, and they're... Bah, bah, bah. Oh, that's totally what it is. Yeah, but it's like all day. It's like, let it rest. Well, because they're, they're plowing the field and spreading their seed, and, uh, and there then... we go. <laughs> there, there we go. Uh, now, Broken, were you always, like, like, the hot brother? Like, was your sister always like, oh, your brother's so hot, like, growing up? Okay, so I was the youngest of three growing up. My sister was, like, homecoming queen, student council president, like, everything. My brother was, like, absolutely the troublemaker, got kicked out of, like, four different schools. What's his phone number? And I, <laughs> um, and I was just like a really like overweight, like had no friends, like little kid. Are you kidding? <laughs> no. Oh my gosh. I was like, I like transferred schools like two or three times. Like I was just like this like dorky little kid with no friends. <laughs> Now you have a lot of friends. Uh, <laughs> a lot of friends. I'd say acquaintances. <laughs> I was like, so do you feel like you're dorky now with no friends? Um, I mean, I definitely, like, you're my friend. Yeah, I was like, that, I'm like, I have broken. I'm like, right, and then, right, right, uh, Teddy. Th- okay. <laughs> you're my friend. You know, that, that dorky quality, um, and not to diminish, you know, whatever bullying you might have gone through or how you felt growing up, but I think that's why your fans really uh, latched onto your videos, because you do show that dorky side, even in the videos or on Instagram, you know, there's this kind of um, accessible, cute, quirky, dorky kind of quality. Thank you. And, like, you're not afraid to post a selfie of you making, like, a dorky face, and I think that's why your fans... Well, I... I mean, when I started my OnlyFans, I really, I didn't feel like I was doing porn, right? Until I started filming with Sean Cody, I really didn't think of myself as, like, a, a, porn, a porn performer star. because I already shared, like, all of my life on Instagram. I talk about mental health. I've talked mm-hmm. about being suicidal. I've talked about therapy and conversion th- conversion therapy as a kid. Like, I talk about all these things. So, for me, and then privately, like, I was always recording myself having sex and just jerking off to it later. Like, I've been into, like... Ex- to your own, like, you jerking off to you jerking off? Well, like, me jerking off to like me getting fucked yeah, by sex. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, was gonna yeah. say, I was like, that's pretty narcissistic. Cause like, I'm going to watch myself jerk off. No, like, like me, it's like inception. Like me watching videos of me getting fucked by like hot guys. Right. And then like, that's the porn I would watch. Cause when I moved to New York, I stopped watching porn. Cause like I became friends with people doing porn when I met it's them. Weird, huh? And I was like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Um, so I like would watch these videos that like my like amateur videos I would make from hookups. Um, but I didn't post them anywhere. So when I started doing only fans, I was just like, I already share all of my life. I already record these videos. I'm just sharing another aspect of my life because I've always been sex positive. I always have like wanted people not to be ashamed of that. So I've always wanted my only fans to just seem like these are like real hookups I'm having, the real sex I have. I never wanted it to be like super like overproduced mm-hmm. or anything. Um, and like I said, like to you guys earlier today, like I like sex to be like that you can laugh during it and it doesn't have to be like super sexy and super like whatever like if something funny happens during sex like let's fucking laugh about it and move on <laughs> like like whenever the maid service walked in oh on my us. gosh teddy and i were making a video oh at this hotel and the, <laughs> the maids came to the door like four times like the first time they came in and they offered they're like do you guys want fruit 
<laughs> I don't know. Like, like, I got mine right. I got my peach right here. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and I am like, I am not quiet. Like, I if I can hear her talking through the door, she can hear me oh, screaming. Yeah. <laughs> like, they were probably all, like, gathered around outside the door, like, hey. Well, the, the, like, guy at the front desk, I, like, Teddy got to the hotel first. I had to, like, be, like, called up and, like, let up the elevator, right? And the guy at the front desk was definitely a homo um mm-hmm. and he probably recognized you guys a hundred percent because and i'm sure that's why he's like he probably like sent something up to the room and that's why the first person came and then <laughs> we were just like oh my gosh like i'm trying to get it in right now like stop coming to the door <laughs> well because like you're in the middle of the scene you're trying to be in it it just keeps taking you out when it's like you keep hearing like housekeeping well, th- because i mean not that i've filmed but i get you know especially like when you're ready to check out and you're like i have an hour to like you know, do a last minute, whatever. You're always super hyper aware of the noise. So then you start to like hold your noise back because you figure like people, especially if they're at the door, like they yeah. know what's happening and it makes you like a little anxious, right? Well, I also like, I was so frustrated. I'm like, ma'am, I just ripped these poppers and I am flying right now. If you do not get out of this fucking doorway. <laughs> Sorry, can I say that? <laughs> you can say whatever you want to hear. <laughs> now, B- Brogan, what was your coming out as like a young, dorky, chubby kid so it's like it's kind of a complicated story so i came out to my sister because i had a hickey on my neck and she like would not leave me alone about like which girl gave me this hickey and so she was like driving me somewhere and she like wouldn't stop bothering me and she's like why can't you tell me and finally i was like because it wasn't a girl it was a guy named brian (laughs) and so she is a little dramatic, so like she had to go to therapy, and like because she could... she had to go to therapy. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, so <laughs> so she basically told my dad that she wanted to go to therapy about like her relationship with my mom because my parents are divorced, and that's a whole different drama. Um, so she goes to therapy. Her therapist helps her like come around to being supportive, and she brings home these pamphlets of like how to come out to your parents. It's like trying to be helpful. That's cute, actually. Yeah, it's cute, and she was trying to be helpful. And I was like 14. And so I'm like, well, that's young. I'm like, I'm not coming out to my parents anytime soon. So I like did what anyone would do and just like put them in my dresser. Um, Uh, And so then like my dad found them. (laughs) Um, So he asked me about it. That did not go well. I kind of like went in and out of the closet like for several times over the next few years. But I like I ended up going to conversion therapy. Um, Whose decision was it to, to send you to conversion therapy? So, like, 15 years later, my dad and I have, like, talked about this a little more, and we have some diff- – we remember it quite differently. So, um, it was my it was my dad and stepmom's idea to send me. Um, obviously, as, like, a 14 or 15-year-old kid, I did not feel like I had a choice. Their memory is a bit more that, like, I was wanting to go. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Like, like, it was summer camp. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think before we all came out, it was like we uh, there was that moment. I and maybe I'm I'm wrong that we all felt God, life would just be so much easier to go with the girl to prom or like have the family, and then we pretended like if there was a magic wand at that age, like did we want to be normal? Well, that's the thing is like you always think about like how much you wanted to be straight, like when you're like God damn, I'm gay. I yeah. hate it, hate it. Yeah. Now it's like we're gay. We're in our thirties. I am so grateful. I am gay. Like I. I just look at street life all the time. I'm like, your lives are so boring. And they age yeah. so terribly. <laughs> <laughs> That's because they put their money into children instead yeah. of, in, <laughs> in, their in, face. instead of, yeah. instead of Derm King Institute. <laughs> <laughs> Beverly Hills. Shout out to Derm King. Please sponsor. <laughs> Thanks for the help. <laughs> that must be very awkward though, because I know parents can have guilt amnesia where they forget what actually happened because we've evolved. We know now that conversion therapy is terrible. We know now that gay people are a thing and have a place in society. And to your point, youth are seeing LGBTQ characters in mainstream Hollywood. Mm-hmm. There's l- labels and there's language now. And households are watching drag queens on mainstream TV. It's yeah. like, we're here. And I also like, I, I actually, like, whenever I talk about, like, going to conversion therapy and stuff, too, people are always like, oh, how could your dad do that? And I, like, always like to clarify. Like, I think my dad is one of the best human beings on the planet he has like really deep religious beliefs and like his biggest fear is like his children not having eternal life right so like it's out of love it's not out of like not loving his kid as a 14 year old like i didn't get that yeah as a 30 year old i look back and i can understand it more and like my stepmom has like apologized like repeatedly like every time it comes up right 
um, for how bad like she feels now that she you know understands more and stuff too. So like they definitely do change their opinions and stuff. But I also think like family does not always like respond the way that you want them to or that would have been the most helpful. Um, but I always try to like, especially young people, like even if it's not the best thing for you, like you need to know that, but also understand like a lot of times it does come out of love. Not always. That's not everyone's situation and everyone's yeah. truth. But a lot of times like, can you salvage that relationship with your parents, with your family? If you understand that, like, that hurtful thing they're doing comes from a loving place. Well, like how I've <clears throat> tried to do it where like to try and continue to forgive like my mom and fa like, father, I remind myself that like the things that they did and said and believed were also not even their fault because they were literally brainwashed by religion. They were doing what they thought. They, they were also taught by their parents and their parents were taught by that to literally think this way or you will die. Everyone will die. This is the worst thing ever. And if you remind yourself constantly that like, that's somebody who was basically in a cult. It's a little bit easier to try and forgive what you will never forget. It gets easier to forgive because you get why it happened. My mom's biggest thing was, you know, she, she lived through the AIDS crisis. So she saw a whole community wiped out. Mm -hmm. And so her thing wasn't about me burning in hell or anything. It's like she didn't want me to get sick and die, you know. And that's the only relationship she had with anything gay. I Like my first day going to conversion therapy, I was like, you know, probably 15, 14 or 15 years old. And I remember like my dad and my stepmom came with me. We're sitting in like the, like not therapist's office. Um, and I remember my stepmom saying, she's like, I'm just so afraid for you that like, if you choose this life, you will not ever be happy. And that really is like the fear, right? Cause she'd all like, they, they, they saw the AIDS crisis. Mm -hmm. They saw so many people die and we weren't having positive gay figures in media. And it's, they didn't have anyone to look at even among like their friends to say like my gay kid can be successful, can be happy, can find love. And what I've said like now as an adult to them is like, I just wish you would have looked at that instead and said, let me help you be happy. Let me help you create a world that lets gay people be happy. That lets my son be happy instead of saying change yourself. Um, but like there was no one really like showing them to do that. So. Well, and I've seen you smile <laughs> plenty. I think you're plenty happy. <laughs> <laughs> There's but, that broken smile. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and that's in like really the thing is whether it's like being gay. And I, I think, you know, well, I've not talked to my family about me doing sex work. Um, my guess is that they would not be supportive. Um, but whether it's being gay or, you know, sharing that part of my life with people just like sharing every part of who I am and like being unapologetic about it. Like I am happier and happier and happier the more authentic I am. And I really think like everyone's so afraid to be themselves or to be judged for being themselves. And just like, Oh my God, when you just like don't have to worry about it anymore. Cause like it's out there. Mm -hmm. Like what a relief. <laughs> well, and even being a sex worker, I mean, you're paying your bills, you're making a living, you know, you're not, homeless out there somewhere and some of my most well-to-do friends are porn stars well, their credit scores are great they own their own home they own a car they're financially secure they're traveling all over the world and like i'm minding my own goddamn business yeah. like <laughs> and i mean you're and you're also you're one of the only porn stars who is very successful as, as successful at what you do and one thing i'm very proud of you is you're you have never been ashamed to be because you're, you're verse but like you're mainly a bottom i mean i'm I've kind of given up on being versed. Like, yeah, like <laughs> I can do it, but like in case of emergency, sort of like <laughs> I know how to swim, but I wouldn't call myself a swimmer, right? <laughs> like I can top, but I wouldn't call myself a top. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I enjoy the topping videos because we get to see your best asset, so to speak. Like, you know, when a, when a bottom has such a great ass and then they're covered up by this top, you're like, wait, move out of the way, Kate Maddox. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> But can I just say something about, you know, there's no bottom shaming that, that you, you know, it's not like you've never talked about in like a bottom shaming way. But I venture to say it's because you have a very manly um, presence with the muscles and like kind of like, bro, you know, we joke about it. But I think some of the bottoms that are like, oh, he's a bottom slut, which I never would put that term with you or because it's the more effeminate you might be one of the only bottoms. ones yeah because, i was like, like oh, oh you should <laughs> take a look take a look at my dms on a daily basis where literally it's just like you're such a whore i love it yeah. and i'm like 
Thanks. Well, I didn't feel like a whore today. It's been three weeks since I actually had sex, but thank you. <laughs> but do you think that you kind of presenting more of a masculine that you kind of escape that whole bottom shaming I mean, energy? yeah, within our community and outside of our community, like, I think gender, I think, today is always more of the issue. Gender expression is more of the issue than your sexuality, right? Like, whether it's within the gay community or how straight people perceive us, if you are passable, you are treated better, right? Like, if you act like a man, if you're if you're even, like, a, a butch lesbian, straight men treat you better right like like you get masculine privileges right if you're a gay man who's masculine you get masculine privileges if you're a gay man who's a, a twink or femme or even just like you get treated like a woman when, when straight people find out that i bottom more often than i top like they're the way they interact with me like changes that's right very, very interesting um and so you know it's there is like these the privileges that come with masculine expression um and i think that goes like definitely within our community too um and it's part of why like well i will never say i'm ashamed to be a bottom i'm like very proud to be a bottom um and i just love what i love um i do get a little embarrassed of like the little bitch noises i make when i get fucked <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but it's funny <laughs> see this big six foot guy tons of muscles and just oh my god but like i just can't help it it is not a performance at all or but anything like, it's not it's not big like, like the second you touch my body i am like <sighs> <laughs> hey Mr. DJ that's what we yeah. <laughs> that's your spoken word album um, and I don't know what it's it funny. is like uh, I don't know like even if I like if I go to like a spa and get like a massage or something I have to be like I apologize I apologize for the noises I'm about to make <laughs> <laughs> really even a non-sexual massage you just start like, cause yeah just like I just how any my massage is sexual in some nature it's even just how like, my body responds to like touch touch is just like I can't keep my fucking mouth shut <laughs> Now, w when was your kind of, like, sexual revolution growing up? Like, at what age do you think you, like, it clicked? Was it, like, the first time having sex or? Um, so my first time doing anything with a guy was, like, straight out of a fucking porno. It was my older brother's best friend. Um, I'm glad I, you finished that sentence, yeah. by the way. <laughs> yeah. My like, older brother. Yeah. It was my, my, my <laughs> older brother's best friend. And my brother was, like a bad kid um and so he had been like doing drugs and had like fallen asleep when he was like 16 so his friend was sleeping over and like came into my bedroom and i had just gotten home from hockey practice oh my god uh, and so yeah. i was like so i was by like falcon studios <laughs> so i was like in my i was like in my bedroom i was 14 right and like he came in his name was kyler um of course it was kyler kyler yeah. The yeah. Most, the i'm surprised name. it wasn't chad michael chad <laughs> <laughs> and he's like how was hockey practice i'm like it was good. He's like, I bet your legs are really sore. Do you want a massage? No way. And so I like got down on my bedroom floor and like in my underwear. Or first I had my shorts on. He's like, you should take your shorts off. And then he like gave me like a leg and butt massage. And next thing I knew, he was like shooting his load on my chest on the couch in the living room. Um, and that's, <laughs> that's so hot. hot. That is so hot. It's like straight out of a porno. I need and, a tissue, like, please. <laughs> and literally so like, jealous. yeah. And I was just like, ugh. I don't know. And then, like, I just took off at a full sprint. You want to know how my, <laughs> what my first time was like? It was on a, on a hill next to my house with the local radio DJ. Oh, my God. Oh, God. I was 14. He was 24. Oh, <laughs> my. Okay, don't, um, don't name him. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, Law and Order SVU. Or, or, or do. And he had. Depends on how you feel about it. He had braces. And that was my at first. At 24? Oh, yes. honey. And that was my first. Okay, no, I'm going to stop. No. <laughs> We're, it gets caught in there. Mm -mm. Well, you're no you're because if they so. no you you we don't say bad things about people with adult braces because if they didn't get braces and they didn't fix your teeth, then you talk shit about their bad teeth. So we we Damn. do not put people down for adult braces. Bam. Okay, okay. <laughs> but you also don't want to get. Have you ever been caught in one of those braces? Well, that's what was my first time. What's like, and then my first time I ever get a blowjob afterwards. I hated it so bad that when he left, I walked home and I thought, I guess I'm not gay. I, <laughs> oh my god it was that bad so i literally just thought i was like i guess i just don't like sex so i won't have sex of anything i just won't like a guy or a girl it was that bad wow oh and then i also woke up the next morning with 25 mosquito bites oh from, from being on the hill yeah so that 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 was my if, first time compared to yours if i would have woken up with 25 bumps on my body the day after i had gay sex for the first time i would have <laughs> been very stressed out yeah 
Oh, I, oh, I didn't even think about it. <laughs> oh my god! Like I remember, like after I after I started having sex, I remember I like shaved my pubes for the first time, and I like had terrible it. razor oh, burn, oh. and I was convinced I had herpes. I was like. I would, like literally like found my friend who had a car and like had her drive me to like a free no questions asked clinic whatever and that person is like you're an idiot you have razor burn. <laughs> God, do you remember us kids like, being child. being so afraid of getting like an STD or something just terrified like the world is gonna end. You're not now. <laughs> you're not terrified. So the, the world's gonna the world's gonna end. <laughs> that you're gonna die. What I want. I just, I want go back i want to know how you ended up on the side of a hill with the dj it's not like you were walking on the side of the hill and he no, was like so hey. I, teddy I, is still at the point in his life where he's like i know the dj <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, he's gonna the, do the your remix DJ. what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> daddy 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 no I, I i managed to find him from at that time i had like found his live journal and like i guess we've been commenting What's back and a forth. live journal oh my god yeah anyone under the age of Thirty is, is not gonna not gonna have any idea. Even I'm thirty and I barely know what that what is. What the hell is a live journal? So live journal is like what you would do to like post your emotions and your poetry. Oh my god! It was like teen emo blogging <laughs> in the early two thousands. I can see you emo like this long floppy yeah, black just, hair. Like, uh, uh. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wish I could still find it. I I at the time thought my poetry is grand and emotional and raw. Um, it was not. <laughs> it was it was raw, but. Yeah, and that's how I that's how I met him. He must still be DJing. Uh, I mean, was that Rick Dees? <laughs> I, was, I was like, if he's still alive, maybe. God, oh my God. Um, Broken, I want to chat about Sean Cody because I grew up on Sean Cody videos. Those were the first kind of porn videos I ever watched. Mm -hmm. But I have heard from other Sean Cody people that there's like a mess of rules and regulations unlike any other studio. They haven't told me the rules. <laughs> well, so, such as you, you can't be part of Sean Cody if you filmed for anything else. Yeah, so, so if you filmed with another studio, you can't film with Sean Cody. So because I had only done OnlyFans content, they had reached out and asked. And they, the, I've always kind of said, like, I didn't I, – before filming with Sean Cody, I never really thought of myself as, like, doing porn, right, like I said. Yeah. And so I also didn't really have a desire to do studio work um, because, like, my fan sites have – been plenty successful and i didn't really see the point um but the day that only fans announced that they were like gonna <laughs> ban sexually explicit content was the day sean cody reached out and i was like yeah this seems like a good option <laughs> <laughs> it's a good time it's about now um i think they've also like really changed kind of their approach to what types of videos they make and like what types of guys they they have it's not necessarily like like i asked them because i don't really watch porn but i was like i was like do I have to like shave my beard or my body hair or anything? They're like, no, you look great. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. As that is different for them. Yeah. They also had a reputation for a while of being very homophobic on set and who they were casting, that they were only casting gay for pay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I've had a great, like, I've had a great experience every scene that I've filmed with them so far. Um, I, like, really love actually being on set. It's a, like, everyone who works there, the people I've filmed with have all been great. How long um, is the scene of them? Because, like, most studio work is usually, like, 8 to 10 hours. We're there from, like, 9 to 4, 9 to 5. Okay. Except for the day that I couldn't come at the end, so I literally kept us there until, like, 8 p.m., and then I still couldn't come, so I had to come back the next day to do it. Well, and sometimes... I don't know if, I don't know if I'm supposed to say that, but they haven't told me not to. I don't well, know. Well, no, they haven't told you. <laughs> well, they, have, they haven't told you the rules, so... No one told me the rules. But uh, Sean Cody uh, also is known for, like, multiple orgasms in a video, but then they'll also send, like, guys out for the weekend and film, like, the whole weekend, so I thought it was a very long kind of session. Um, not I've only filmed like a handful of scenes with them mm. so far, but I um, and none of them have been released as of today. Um, but I've had I mean nothing but a wonderful experience with them. It's been really great. Is it weird having somebody else in the driver's seat? Um, no, because like it's not like like there's no like cheesy script, right? Like it's straight to sex, mm -hmm. and so that's what I liked about Sean Cody. Is yeah, like, okay, here it is. And so really and they don't tell us like what to do like it's it's really like it's not have the sex you guys like what's good for you guys like have the sex you want to have so it's more so, genuine so it's like i just have great i did sex. not know that because it seems very well choreographed well lit like the camera's always in the right position yeah i mean it's i just get to have great sex hmm. <laughs> i was very nervous that i like wasn't going to be able to come in my first scene i came twice <laughs> <laughs> There, there's been kind of an influx of people that were only doing OnlyFans starting to do studio stuff. Have you ever thought about doing studio? Dear God, no. 
Um, I've done. I did studio like six years ago, and I vowed that I will never do it again. Um, I I loathed my experience. In the the culture has changed though over the six years. Well, the thing, maybe it's changed, but like I just remember my experience with studios that I was being hired to be the hairy guy, and even then they still be like, "Well, can you trim a little bit of your shoulders or a little bit of your back?" And it was just so like somebody controlling my body, telling me who I would film with, how I would have sex, and I just I felt like they literally took all the consent away from me. And it made me hate sex. Mm-hmm. So I, I honestly will never go back. And to be honest, I think it would actually hurt my OnlyFans because most studio work leaks. Because for the company, it's actually profitable for them to leak it. Well, that's right, why people will go see more. I think it's so, yeah. I yeah, think it's so interesting. And I actually have had a hard time really like finding people that I enjoy filming with lately, too, because I think it's so interesting when OnlyFans creators like want to make their videos like so – well produced and like professional looking that it's like their studio i'm like if people wanted studio porn they would be going to the studio sites or to Pornhub or whatever like to me people want to see my amateur stuff right so like a percent so like put the phone up let's just do our thing yeah. or like hold the phone do a pov whatever like let's just have really fun sex i don't want to do like stop go stop go. okay let me move the phone let me do this mm-hmm. da, 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 da. like it's, and then like, sh- <laughs> Teddy and I will joke because it's like, we don't want to be like shooting B-roll for like an OnlyFans video, and that's like, yep. <laughs> very specific conversation. Yeah. We've had. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that stays off camera, but like we both agreed, like that's just at that point, we, we would just do studio point. Then if we're gonna do that, because at least then you're getting paid for it. Yeah, like, and so like there's there's stuff that like we know fans want to see so like if we have to do multiple angles and like move cameras and stuff like i get it like that's kind of what we have to do to to please everyone that's watching our videos but i don't ever want my videos to seem like they're coming out of a studio yeah right because at the end of the day like these studios have huge teams of people and big budgets to produce what they produce if i try to do that by myself it's just going to seem like a really shitty studio video. <laughs> like... and, and also, like, if you, if you and I tried to tr- try and do acting together, I would just giggle the Can whole you time. Imagine? Oh, my God. So, if, like, <laughs> I can't. Oh, my God. If you want, like, most times, like, I am not paid to talk most times, right? Like, I am <laughs> literally, that's not what people want me around for. Um, doesn't stop me. But, like, when I filmed my first uh like solo scene for sean cody afterwards they do like an interview with you where mm-hmm. you're like you're just supposed to talk about yourself yep. i love these interviews we had, by the way we That's had to, I love about sean we cody. had to change out who was recording and who was doing the interview with me because like we could not stop giggling it took us That's an hour funny. to get like an eight minute video done and i was just like i can't do this i can't do this i'm sorry i'm sorry i was sweating <laughs> like That's so cute. it was it was awful <laughs> that was the that was the only studio video i haven't liked is the interview where i could not stop giggling and just get through that was talk, the, the talk hardest about, part of your day talking about myself for eight minutes <laughs> um, but i want to talk about talking about yourself and sharing a lot as a, as an avid fan i know that you moved coast to coast um you know you shared a lot on social media about like even that trip moving out here certain relationships you've had have you found that as your uh fan base has grown that you've started to kind of curtail and keep more of your private life your private life um, I mean, so I had, after I moved here, I mean, if anyone was following, like, I started dating someone, he became part of, like, my OnlyFans, we started an OnlyFans together, he now has his own, um, we haven't even, like, publicly announced, but, like, we broke up over the summer, um, we still- People know, by the way. Oh, I mean, like, I would hope they figure it out, but trust me, based on my DMs, people still don't know, also. <laughs> They're like, you haven't posted a picture in a while, people like, have not, it out. People have not yeah. figured it out. Um, and I still like if I go to an event like we're Teddy and I went to Atlanta for Pride together, you know, a month ago or something. And the, the amount of people who still come up and are like, where is he? I'm like, I don't know. They're not real fans. <laughs> I know the date and time you broke up. No. <laughs> um, but I mean, so I do think that. And we're still roommates. We're still friends. Like we live together. We get along very You're roommates. We, oh, yeah. We get along very well and like want each other to be successful. There's no there's nothing like negative to say about about him or that relationship um but i do think like as i reflect back i do think sharing so much of our relationship and allowing our relationship to become intertwined like work and pleasure um was a big part for me of what led to me being unhappy in the relationship because there was not that like separation anymore and it kind of makes your personal sex life 
become work. And at some point I kind of found myself being like, am I able to have sex for fun anymore? Because like even the sex I'm supposed to be loving with my partner is work all the time. Um, and for some people that's probably great, but for me it wasn't. And, um, so now like, you know, I've been, I've like been talking to a guy who does not live in LA. Teddy has met him. Um, and I told Teddy multiple times, like the most attractive thing about him to me is that he has like 120 followers on Instagram. Um, Sounds and, like, sexy. and like nine, not even nine posts over the last three years. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's suspect though too. That's also a red flag. <laughs> no, that to, like to, to us, that's so sexy. Oh my like, God. Oh, you don't care about social media. And he like, oh. did, he like didn't know who I was when I met him. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Oh my gosh, tell me more. <laughs> tell me more. Okay, I want tell me how nobody. Though. <laughs> Describe this guy. How did you guys meet? Um, we met at Nashville pride. Um, and he did not like me because he thought I was probably some like stuck up West Hollywood pretty boy. Um, and then I won him over throughout the weekend. <laughs> how did you win him I mean, over? T- yeah, tell him how. I ask? Tell yeah. me how. Um, how well, he, he first came up to you. Well, he I was standing with a group of other OnlyFans performers. We were all bottoms, and he came up with a, like several handfuls of uh, chili cheese dogs, and was like, "Do any of you guys want a hot dog?" <laughs> And I was just like, you are a dumb top. Like you came up you came up to a group of bottoms at Pride and offered us chili and cheese dogs. He's like he's like, good to know. That's so cute. Oh, he's adorable. Um and then later on I was like talking about how like I'm not eating all weekend, right? Um, but he had a pizza. And I was like just like looking at it. And he's like, Do you want a piece? I was like, Oh, can I have can I have oh. one? Um, and so we like started talking. I don't know. And then uh, spent the weekend together. Did you have sex that weekend? Yeah, we did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But first, like, I gave him a really nice back massage. And you're in your hockey year. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, how, how many puck jokes could we have made there, by the way? Oh, my God. I just want to puck you. <laughs> puck off. <laughs> That was pucking great. Okay, Puck that's me. <laughs> All right, we have to answer a few of our listener questions. Uh, this is Thomas from Instagram. He says, my boyfriend wants to start an OnlyFans. We could use the extra income, but I don't want him to be seen in that light. Should I just tell him no? I mean, what do you think? <laughs> I would like to know why you would, why you think that's a light your boyfriend shouldn't be seen in. Um, I mean... To me, that sounds like his issues, if his boyfriend's comfortable with it. But it does affect him. And once once you go past that boundary, there's no going back ever. But how do you say it affects him? It affects him like he thinks he's going to be judged? That sounds like he's just making it all about himself. Yeah, like, But he's part of the relationship, though. Yeah, but that's a separate thing. I, I don't know. I'm not one of those ones that I think a relationship molds you into. But here's the thing. One human being. I agree with you, right? But that's not what he's saying. So he's not he's not admitting what his real concern is. Mm-hmm. Their concern is how it affects him. Yeah. But he's saying he's making it like more altruistic. Like I'm concerned about my boyfriend. Bitch, no, you're not. <laughs> you're concerned about how it represents you mm-hmm. and that you would be embarrassed of your boyfriend. So like that's what it is. And if that's the case, and if you and your boyfriend don't see eye to eye on that, it sounds like we have a bigger conversation about sex positivity to have. And if you are aligned, <laughs> okay, but this couple's gonna break up, and I'm gonna be to blame. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and you're and you're gonna film with the guy. Yeah, he's once gonna they break film. Up. He's gonna be my my first scene with Brogan uh, with Chili Cheese Dog. <laughs> call me. Oh my god. <laughs> but also, it sounds well. Obviously, when they met, he wasn't an OnlyFans, so it'd be like if you were dating somebody, and the guy says, "Hey, I'm gonna give up my six figure job and become a clown." That's not who you started. Oh, to, I actually, I can, to I can, I can see what you're saying because actually one. One of my it's been a while since i've had a boyfriend but we actually had that where it was when i was like a go-go dancer on the border of doing only fans and then when i started it we we broke up and it was one of those things where he's like i can't but i can't do that here's yeah. the thing though but and i get that because when i start when i started dating my ex <clears throat> i was doing only fans he was not and i told him like i don't want to date another sex worker right so i get it and then when he came to me and said, I want to start doing this with you and I want to start doing it on my own, one of the conversations we had was like, I told you I oh, don't want to date another sex worker. If you need the money, if this is just something you want to do, I support you, but I want it to be like known that I raised the concern. So if this affects us down the road, if I can't handle it, whatever, like we can't say like I didn't voice 
that I had a problem with it. Broken. Isn't that a little hypocritical <clears throat> that you could mm-hmm. be an OnlyFans, but you wouldn't allow him to do? An no, OnlyFans? because it's not the it's not the sex work that's the issue. It's one. Th- your schedule as a sex worker is all over the place. And a lot of times, like, you're on other people, like, on demand for other people. And so that's difficult to make a relationship work. It's easier when one person has a steady nine-to-five job and I can adjust my schedule to be like, I know when my partner is available Mm -hmm. and I want to – I can build my schedule and say yes to the gigs that I am taking and no to the ones I'm not going to take to make sure I'm still going to have time for my partner and that we can still prioritize each other. It is really difficult – in my experience, to make that happen when you're both all over the place and when that other partner still has their nine to five job. Mm -hmm. And so that's what it was for me. It was about how do we make time for each other and make time for our relationship. And I didn't think we could do that. And I think that kind of was what led to us breaking up. So Hmm. not him doing, not him doing OnlyFans, right? but not not finding a way to prioritize each other and make time for each other. So. All right. Well, one of our next questions we have is Eric, who emailed us asking, my boy has gained some weight and can't really fit in his undies the way he used to, but he doesn't seem to realize it. Am I allowed to say something? I mean, COVID was not kind to a lot of us. I'll tell you <laughs> yeah, that like, much. <laughs> what do you want? Okay. Do you, are you trying to say like you need to buy bigger underwear because bitch is buying bigger underwear or are you trying to say you need to lose weight? Because those are two different things Yeah, there are two different things. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that he's most likely trying to be like, I want to tell my partner that you've gained weight and it's noticeable. I, I mean, okay, if if it's as innocent as you need bigger underwear, just buy him bigger underwear and put them in I don't think drawer. it's that. If it is that you're concerned about your partner's weight, I don't know. I kind of love a big guy. Like, <laughs> I, was, I was like, yeah, I was like, you're asking the wrong podcast about that. Um, I mean, I guess I would say like, if if it if you think it's from generally like at a point of like you see them getting unhealthy, then all you can do is just like offer to go for hikes together, offer to work out. That's together. always the advice, and it's like. I mean, if you're not a hiking couple already, I hate hiking. Ch- I mean, it's <laughs> like ask, it's outdoors, and there's the like hike. the sun. I don't leave my house. Well, other than all right, well, to but the then if but if you're not going to go, if, <laughs> if you're not going to put in work too, then don't, you don't yeah. get to complain. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Well, that, like that, so, so yes, you may not like hiking, but if you want your partner to lose weight, well, bitch, you're going hiking too. I mean, I mean, my weight has gone up and down like by week, month, day, whatever. Um, but you're also in a relationship. You're attracted to what you're attracted to. And if you're no longer attracted, they should know that. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. I see your point. It's true. And, like, if you're, if you're not attracted to your partner anymore, you know, you need to be honest with yourself and with, and with him. Um, I will say there are, like, subtle or kinder ways to go about <laughs> it than others, right? Like, it could be, like, babe, I kind of want to go on this new diet. Would you do it with me? And then, like, suddenly you're doing keto together. Um, and then you're fighting, and then you break up anyway because you're hungry. Or, and you're not eating carbs. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I mean, you could, if you're not concerned about your way, you could just, like, sneak the carbs behind the room. <laughs> you go into your car, you're like, oh, I'm just going to go for a drive, just shoveling bread in your mouth. Oh, I've done it, trust me. Well, and this guy, this guy, uh, this guy's boyfriend who's gained weight, I mean, you know when you gain weight. I mean, if your underwear is, like, constricting and there's lines when you take your underwear I mean, off, especially like... as underwear, underwear can stretch. So if your underwear so is much, not, though. If your underwear is not fitting anymore, you gained a lot, honey. Yeah. Well, and then 10 pounds, if you don't say anything, will turn into 20 pounds. And then before you say something, then it's 30 pounds. That's a long way to go. But I'm like, go. if the dude's happy, and here's, here's, I mean, here's the real thing, too. Like, you're attracted to what you're attracted to, yeah. absolutely. And, and physical attraction to your partner, yes, it absolutely matters. But, I mean, like... My body fluctuates too, and I have sex with a lot of people. And like at the end of the day, like there are a lot of really attractive people who I think are really terrible people. <laughs> and like I, it's maybe it's easier for me to say it right because I am having sex a lot. But it's like I don't think it's like the number one thing to be concerned about and base the foundation of yeah. your relationship on. Like at some, I don't know how old these people are, right? Yeah, but we, it's, we at some that. point, like beauty fades, anyways. Um, so like if you still love him, if he's still a good partner to you, like maybe check what are your own priorities in the relationship. Cause if your partner's happy and if your partner feels good about how he looks, if he's not concerned about his weight, like, I don't know. I'm kind of my happiest when I don't have abs. And when I'm like, <laughs> I mean, you also brought up a really good point that like, I, I try to explain this to people and like, cause since what we do for work is sex work, sex is not the number one biggest factor in for relationship for me. So like if my partner is maybe, is maybe getting flabby and like, that's not as big as a turn on or something. 
I really wouldn't care as long as they're still my partner who brings me the things that like my sex work. Companionship. Yeah, exactly. Then I'm like that. But I care more about. I'm like if I need a six pack or something, you can go find that anywhere. But I can't find that's that true. relationship anywhere. Oh, that's true. Hmm. And that's what that's also why I agree with open relationships, so that you don't have this moments of my partner gained ten pounds. Do I have to break up with them? You could just be like, no, enjoy your partner and, and, and go have sex something else. And different people have different sex drives and whatever else. And it, like it's going to be different to every people. As sex yeah. as sex workers, like s- frequent sex with my partner is not at the highest of my priorities for like making a good relationship cuddling so, and watching a movie with them is yeah like that like, means you know everything. it's funny because i'll see porn couples and all they seem to do is film for only fans and then they're at the gym all day and that's all the pictures and i know they're at the gym for two hours a day every day and then they're filming for the rest it's like well when do you get to like build your relationship uh, what you just said is not correct though you see what we show you on instagram that does not mean that's our but life but i know them personally and i know that that's their only focus they're never like going out to dinner together. They're never going to see a play together or anything like that. It's all I mean, also, this. a lot of us are just also antisocial. Like, I'm not going out to dinner. I'm not going out to plays. Like, I, I literally leave if I'm, like, catching a flight or going to the dermatologist. Like, I joke, I joke <laughs> but, like, those are, like, like, I've, like, taken my dog to the dog park, gone to Derm King, or Bro, gone to the airport. Next flight. Next flight. Like, that, like those are the reasons I leave my house. Yeah, same. Same. <laughs> Well, on that note, <laughs> you, you can send us your questions. Email us uh, at bearwithusgirl at gmail.com. And there's a U and there's three R's, bearwithusgirl at gmail.com. Uh, and, and make sure you guys just show us some love. We are growing this podcast, so please comment, rate, subscribe. All of our links are at bearwithusgirl.com. It's a U and three R's. Broken, where can everybody find and follow you? Um, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter. And just for fans at Brogan X Brogan. And my OnlyFans is still my old handle. So it's OnlyFans.com slash Brogan underscore NYC. <laughs> and you can find me at Mr. Teddy Bear Gurr. And you can find me uh, on Instagram at Alexander is on air until I launch my hockey um, OnlyFans. <laughs> 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 oh, well, and that's it. That's another episode. Any any final words? Alexander on ice. Alexander on ice. <laughs> 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 Imagine me. I'd, I'd be like the Gatorade boy. No, I'll mean, give you your butt massage after. Yeah. We can go from there. Your first, your first video. I bet your legs. You, are you really, go. I just, bet your legs are really sore. You go onto the ice, and but you think it's ice skating. It's a hockey team, so you're there yeah. like twirling. <laughs> I'm like, Johnny Weir. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to him, by the way? I don't know. That's where is Johnny Weir? I think he. I think he. Sits, <laughs> that's the next podcast. I think he also sits behind the microphone and just does something like this now, right? <laughs> I don't know. He. I, I know he's tried everything from like a cooking show to reality show to like. I, God only he's knows. probably anyway. he's probably one of the like masked bottom only fans. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> I think that's so hot, by the way. Anyway, that's the end of our episode. Uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> that has been another episode of Bear With Us, Girl, presented by Bear World Magazine and Cybersocket.com. Please take a moment to like, subscribe, comment, rate, all the love and support you can give, guys. Questions, comments, and suggestions? Email us at bearwithusgirl, three R's, at gmail.com. Until next time, embrace the fur. Grrr.